Picture the most intense competition you've ever seen. Maybe it was a rivalry football game or the final round in an Olympic archery match. Whatever you're picturing, the competitors probably don't look cheerful. They might look serious, angry, or even hostile. In other words, they've got their game face on. The idea here is that a laser focus expression can disarm opponents and make them feel uneasy and anxious. But according to psychology research, it can also do more than that. Putting on your game face may help your performance too. It's maybe not that surprising that many people avoid angry faces, but the cool thing is those reactions are measurable, so we can get a sense of exactly how these expressions affect us and why. Like in a 2018 study, researchers showed 37 people images of faces that were happy, neutral, or angry. Then, they closely measured the subject's electrodermal activity. Electrodermal activity can mean a couple of things. Either the electrical output of nerves or how electric current travels as it passes over our skin. But basically, it's a way to see how much someone is sweating, and by extension, how stressed they are. That's because fear and anxiety flood your system with hormones that boost your heart rate and get you ready for physical activity. It's part of the fight or flight response that helps protect you from danger, and part of that response is sweat. In the study, those who saw an angry face produced almost one and a half times more electrodermal activity than when they were exposed to a neutral one. So, the faces seemed to stress them out. And beyond that, researchers also found that the expression people were shown was related to the amount of personal space they needed. It varies a lot by person. But on average, studies suggest we tend to prefer a roughly 30-centimeter bubble around us. But in this study, people who saw an angry face said their comfort zone was about 30% bigger on average, or almost 40 centimeters. Based on all this, you might think that a game face is definitely the way to go. Like, if you have a chance to stress out your opponent and keep them away from you, cool. Except things are more complicated than what we see in the lab. Like, stress is an important factor in sports performance, but it also affects people differently based on their personality and background. For some, a little stress might be motivating, but for others, the same amount will be totally overwhelming. Everyone's comfort zone is different and depends on a bunch of factors, including stress management and experience. Genetics even plays a role since all kinds of genes are related to fear and anxiety. So putting on a game face might be a double-edged sword. You might psych out some players, or you might motivate them even more. But hey. That doesn't mean you should retire your well-practiced scowl, because studies also show that putting one on can help you perform better, at least on some tasks. This kind of connection between facial expression and physiology is called facial feedback hypothesis. The idea is that no matter what you're feeling, the physical act of expressing an emotion will cause your body to emulate that. And it can affect how you feel, although how much depends on the situation. Now, evidence for this hypothesis is pretty mixed, so not all psychologists are on board with it. But some researchers do think that it may be related to why a game face can help us out. For instance, take this study. In a 2019 paper, a group of researchers had 62 participants do various challenges. In one, they were basically put through a perfectionist nightmare. They were told to put together a 100-piece black black and white puzzle in only five minutes. The key was before they started, some participants were shown examples of a game face from pro athletes and were asked to replicate it during the challenge. Other participants weren't given any instructions about facial expressions. In the end, the second group completed about seven pieces on average, but those who got their game face on completed an average of 11 pieces, about 60% more. As for why, the researchers proposed that this could be another application of the facial feedback hypothesis. Except instead of facial expressions triggering a certain emotion, the subject's brains were linking those faces with a certain behavior. See, over time, your brain learns to group different things and sensations, which helps it sort new information faster and easier. And this includes facial expressions. So in this study, subjects' brains may have associated their game face with accomplishing a hard task, one that required a boost in memory and performance. Essentially, the game face could have been signaling to 
into their brains that they needed to pay more attention and work harder. Now, when it comes to personal performance in physical challenges like sports, game faces are harder to study, mostly because people tend to make them even when they're told not to. But there is some support for them. Like one study looked at more than 4,000 images of World Cup soccer players from over 300 teams. And it found that players who wore angry expressions gave up fewer goals. It's hard to say why without more controlled studies, but some researchers have suggested that anger can be helpful for physical tasks, specifically if the task is something you might naturally do while angry. Like, I don't know, kick something really, really hard. Though again, we'll need more detailed studies to know for sure. Still, the next time you're getting ready for the big game, or the next time you're preparing for a big recital or presentation, maybe give it a try. It might just give you the edge you need. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Psych. We're always looking for new stories about how our brains work or why we do the things we do. So if you have any questions or ideas for future episodes, we'd love to hear them. And if you're a patron, you can be sure we see your questions by leaving it in our patron inbox over at patreon.com slash scishow.